Welcome to the Backlash at Backlash.com. My name is Rod Van Mecklen, and in this video I'm going to read excerpts from an article that is one of my more recent on the subject of what will happen to the feminist hate mail programs when the economy collapses. Wealth, women, economic collapse, and the end of the misandrous milieu. Oh, and by the way, uh, four or five years ago, in an article that I wrote for um, A Voice for Manginas, I used the term misandrous, and one of the young progressives there scolded me and said, you're ignorant, don't you know that the term is misandric? Well, I've probably been using the term misandry for longer than that kid's been alive, and misandrous is in the dictionary, and it is a proper usage. Now, I'm not going to scold anybody or get after them for using the word misandric. It will probably get in the dictionary, too. But, yes, misandrous is a word and it's a proper usage. So, Wealth, Women, Economic Collapse, and the End of the Misandrous Milieu. The Feminist Hate Movement, 2012, Olympia, Washington. For the better part of the quarter century, men's rights activists, or MRAs, have claimed that feminism is a hate movement. It's no longer about women's liberation, but about female supremacy. It was no longer about truly improving the status of women, but about tearing down the status of men. They accomplished this by portraying men's interest in women as predatory and perverted, replacing fathers with government programs, and in every way possible portraying women as victims of oppression who are underserved by the world of men. To remedy this, divorce, accusations of sexual harassment, and false accusations of rape were made easy and even popular. And innumerable government programs were implemented to raise up and protect all of the oppressed women. Threatened with accusations of sexual harassment and rape, men are refusing to initiate relationships. Women find it ever easier to get laid, but not to get loved. Millions of fathers are saddled with child support payments to subsidize ex-wives who, bored with marriage, file for divorce, and use family court to turn their evil, patriarchal, woman-oppressing ex-husband into a virtual slave. From kindergarten through postgraduate school, the education system caters to women to the detriment of men. Now, it's fine to protect and serve women, but we've gone too far, beyond all reason, to shield women from the slightest social impediment. What feminists want, they got, guarantees that women will get ahead at the expense of and on the backs of men. The cultural, financial, and political power base feminism has turned into a mass movement based on hatred of all things male or misandry is ubiquitous. The milu is misandrous. Small wonder that men by the millions are saying no to marriage, making career choices that minimize their success and their tax burden, and leaving it to women to pay their own way. Is there nothing that can change this? The key is to eliminate government-funded feminist programs and to eliminate biased constraints on men. That means we have to counter and destroy their power base or develop our own. The key power bases are cultural, financial, and political. On the political side, the feminist power base depends on women's programs paid for or subsidized by the taxpayers. M many of these programs are designed to substitute for and replace functions unique to the tra traditional male gender role, protector, provider, and so on. If the economy collapses, then the programs will too. When that happens, women will look to men again. There's strong evidence that the global economy is about to collapse into a global depression that will include America. If that happens, the programs will decline if not end, and the pervasive hostility toward all things masculine will decline. But there are also at least a few transformational technologies in development that could turn that around. Instead of a global depression, there would be a global recovery. Except that this will guarantee continued funding for the replace male programs. That would be a good thing. But if it happens, then what are we to do? Now, I wrote that in 2012, and there's more to that article. But here we are, three years later, with no global economic collapse, and no great technological innovations either, and the economy just seems to be staggering along. Oh, and by the way, I was reading earlier today that um, when you, first off, 
let me backtrack a little bit here. If you go to John Williams' website, Shadow Government Statistics, which I think is shadowstats.com, and he um, adjusts the government statistics to be what they were before they started getting manipulated by, um, oh heavens, Greenspan, Alan Greenspan and the Reagan administration, the progressives on the Reagan administration. And by the way, the banging that you might be hearing, that's my neighbors upstairs. I don't know what they're up there doing, jumping around and thrashing around and making lots of noise. But anyway, shadowstats.com and the adjustment that they do to the unemployment rate to take it back to what it would look like um, during the Great Depression. And what we find is that we have an unemployment rate of over 20% based on how unemployment was measured during the Great Depression. George W. Bush's recovery was a lie. Barack Obama's rec economic recovery, another lie. These people, they represent different political parties, but the same agenda. There's virtually no difference between them. Nothing that makes any real difference to us anyway. But I was reading on Zero Hedge today. Um, let me think. That was Charles Hugh Smith. So if you could actually go directly to his website, but it was reposted on Zero Hedge, where he did some analysis of his own and conservatively, what he found was that um, when you combine the people who are unemployed and the people who are underemployed, that at a bare minimum, you have a rate of 25%, and that at the more extreme rate, it's 40%. So we are not in an economic recovery. Things are bad. But... Many years ago, Martin Armstrong of Armstrong Economics forecasted that there would be a sovereign debt crisis and that it would happen in October of 2015. That's a few months away. And this was years ago that his uh, forecasting, that his models pointed to this. And this will mark the beginning of the collapse. If it does happen, whether with a big bang or a tsunami that slowly gathers momentum as it sleeps around, sweeps around the globe, it will undermine the ability of governments throughout the West to maintain the program feminists promulgated to replace men. Well, that would be a good thing for us. But as I outlined in another video, linked below, Martin Armstrong also proposed a solution, one that every sovereign nation around the globe could implement that would prevent or cure a collapse and like the technological innovations that I mentioned above, could put us on the road to recovery. This would breathe new life into the replace male programs. But wait, it gets worse. <laughs> really, it does. Demographics are working against us, too. In the generation that began coming of age a few years ago, there's a shortage of women centered around Asia and the subcontinent that will increase the relative value of individual women including in the West, as men leave Asia and India in search of wives. Now, why would that be a bad thing for us? Of course, the uh, fact that, um, well, there are going to be a lot of guys who are going to be uh, competing for relatively fewer women, and so it's going to get harder to find a wife, unless maybe you factor in the MGTOW, which um, might help to balance things out. Hmm, I hadn't thought of that. That could be a good thing. But the reason that it would be bad for us politically is that this increase in the relative value of women will shift power to favor women. In and of itself, that's not a bad thing, except that who's going to grab a hold of that power and implement it? Feminists! Progressives! On the right, no, as Bern Chapin points out, it's on the left. That's my left. I don't know if that's your left. It's probably your right. So, yeah, your left, my left. You guys who are on the left and say, oh, no, politics doesn't matter. It's not about politics. It's not about left and right. 
Are you guys nuts? Jeez. <laughs> it's the leftists who support all the feminist programs. Well, now, you know, I love Warren Farrell. He is a great guy. He's one of my heroes. And he's on the left. Now, personally, I think he's really a neo, uh, I'm sorry, not a neo a liberal, but a classical liberal like me. And while I'm on the right, as I'll explain below about that, um, classical liberals are like a gnat's whisker away from being libertarians. And um, so while well, I'm in the Republican Party right now, that could change. I could easily go back to the Libertarian Party if the Republicans don't wise up. But I'll touch on that in a moment. As the relative value of women increases, this will shift power toward women because, of course, then governments are going to be saying, well, women are making demands, women are relatively more valuable than men, and so we need to cater to women, which they're doing anyway because of feminists. And now we have this added demographic shift. And who's going to be there to implement that shift in power? It'll be the feminists on the left. Now here's people like Warren Farrell, who are, is also on the left. And he's saying, well, we need to be fair to men. And so we have programs for women. We need programs for men. Well, the money for the programs for women is coming from who? Well, the working people who are women and men. And the economy is already buckling under the strain. And now we say, well, we're going to have programs for men, too. Where is that money going to come from? Where are you going to get it from? Pull it out of your ears? We try to keep this a um, family-friendly channel here. So I won't actually say what I was thinking. My point is that we can't rely on a global economic collapse to rescue us from the misandry. It'll require political action. And for you leftists, that means choosing sides. You can stick with the progressives on the left who support those programs, or you can join us, join the conservatives and the classical liberals on the right who oppose them. Being a classical liberal, which, like I said, is a gnat's whisker from libertarianism, I've chosen the Republicans, at least until we see whether they've learned their lesson after losing the 2012 election to, ha, Ron Paul, gotcha. No, Ron Paul didn't win, Barack Obama did. But Mitt Romney didn't lose to Barack Obama. He lost to Ron Paul and the millions of Ron Paul supporters who incensed refused to vote for Romney after the shoddy way that the establishment Republicans treated Ron Paul. Some Ron Paul supporters refused to vote. Some Ron Paul supporters voted for Barack Obama. Some, like me, voted for Gary Johnson, the Libertarian candidate. Millions of us didn't vote for Mitt Romney. So they lost to Ron Paul. Mitt Romney lost to Ron Paul, not Barack Obama. And that's why Barack Obama won. And you're not going to get any establishment Republican to admit that in public, in private. Yeah, a lot of them do. So if they've learned their lesson and nominate Rand Paul, I'll remain with the GOP. At least until if Rand Paul gets elected and then turns out to be just as big a disappointment for us as I know Barack Obama is for folks on the left, well, yeah, then I'll go to the Libertarian Party, too. But if they do something stupid like nominating Jeb Bush, well, then I'll join Glenn Beck and return to the Libertarian Party. And for right now, those are the only two parties where those of us who oppose the feminist hate programs belong. Check out the other videos, subscribe to the channel, for the Backlash at Backlash.com, my name is Rod Van Mecklen.